You might think this is gymnastics, or breakdancing, or maybe even some form of martial arts. But it's actually a sport called tricking. And even if you've never heard of it, there is a good chance you've seen it. Over the past 10 years or so, social video platforms like YouTube and Instagram have boosted Tricking's fan base while fostering a global community of trickers who are constantly one-upping each other. And if there's one trick that best reflects the sport's rapid evolution, it's the corkscrew. It's a one-footed, tilted backflip combined with at least one 360-degree twist. Even a single corkscrew is tough to pull off. So tough that, as recently as a few years ago, a double cork, where the tricker rotates 720 degrees in the air, was considered the physical limit of the sport. But pretty soon, expert trickers were landing double corks like they were nothing. Then came the triple corks. And finally, in 2016, the world's first quad cork. But since then, only two other people have landed a quad cork on camera. So is four rotations the limit? Today, we're going to look at why a quintuple cork, that's five full spins combined with a tilted backflip, is almost impossible. To find out what it takes, I got a crash course in tricking like fundamentals. That, all in one motion, exactly. Spoke with some of the best trickers on earth. Do you want to be the first person to do a quint? If I had time to like train for it, yeah, yeah for sure. And talk with a physicist about what separates tricking from other acrobatic feats. It's not the, your typical gymnastics kind of movement. It's not symmetric. Tricking has its roots in martial arts, which people have obviously been practicing for thousands of years. But tricking as it's known today has really only been around since the turn of the millennium. Competitions work like breakdance battles, which means that athletes are judged not only on their ability to string together tricks, but also their style. There's just so many different elements that compose and make tricking what it is. That's professional tricker Michael Guthrie. He was the first American to land a triple cork, and in 2016, the first person in the world to land a quad cork. A trick that is so hard to pull off, he hasn't landed one since. As far as power or difficulty goes, this is the pinnacle of tricking right now, the quad cork. Even the setup is tough. It requires a series of precisely timed rotations that help the athlete build the momentum they need to launch into the air and perform an off-axis backflip plus as many twists as they can manage, all in less than a second. You need strength to maximize your height, you need coordination to maximize the speed of your spin, and depending on the setting, you might also have a spring floor which buys you a few extra inches of height. And then, of course, you have to land the thing, which honestly looks pretty painful. We can step back, step back, we're gonna use our arms, step forward. To get a better sense of just how difficult like this trick is, Guthrie met me at a gym in Redwood City, California to teach me some fundamentals. Before we started, he asked me if I had ever done a backflip before. Like, that is a reasonable starting point. But no, I've never done a backflip. So instead, Guthrie decided to start me out with something a little easier. It's called the scoot. The scoot itself is, uh, it's a setup for a trick. It's a setup to help us get more power. Relax, let those legs go over the head here, and keep that right foot off the ground just until the end. Try to keep a little more control before setting it down. Okay, so. Yes, there okay. you go. And that left foot. There you go, right? yeah, exactly. Now, the scoot might not look that impressive, especially when I do it, but that's because it's more of a foundational move. It teaches novice trickers the importance of being precise with the timing of their movements, and it helps advanced trickers build momentum for more complicated tricks. The scoot is actually what Australian tricker Scott Skelton used as his setup when he performed the world's first triple cork. But for the quad cork, Guthrie needed something more powerful. What was missing for you that was separating your three or three and a half cork from a quad. Finding the right setup. So when we were going through this episode, we had that move, the scoot, which is not necessarily the most powerful setup. No one has ever done a quad cork from scoot, so it had to be found. In other words, Guthrie had to find something more powerful than the scoot. His search led him to a more advanced setup move called the touchdown raise. Here's what it looks like. So what makes the touchdown raise such an outstanding setup? To help answer that question, we called up physicist John DeBartolo. It's a couple of things that are at play here. You exert large enough forces on your body while you're 
feet are in contact with the ground to produce a large torque and to give you a large angular momentum. And then when you're in the air, you decrease your moment of inertia by a significant amount and that will further boost your rate of spin. All right, let's break those terms down one by one. Torque is just twisting force. Guthrie produces it when his feet and hands are in contact with the ground. The more torque he applies, the greater his angular momentum. Angular momentum depends on how fast a trigger spins and something that physicists call their moment of inertia, which is related to the way they position their bodies around the axis on which they're spinning. Now, these concepts can be tough to visualize on a trigger, at least at first, so let's start with a more traditional example, a figure skater. When he draws his arms, hands, feet, and legs in towards his axis of rotation, it decreases his moment of inertia and increases his rate of spin. Now let's go back to Guthrie. What makes the touchdown raise so powerful is the way it allows Guthrie to first sweep his limbs far from his body and then pull them in close, right as he's launching into the air. It's a little like the figure skater, except sideways and without the skates. Plus, Guthrie is actually rotating around two axes, one for the off-kilter backflip, here, and another for the spins, here. And when you think of it that way, tricking sounds a bit like gymnastics, which it is, but there are some important distinctions as well. What is it that differentiates a move like the corkscrew, which is a pretty typical move in tricking, from uh, similar maneuvers in a discipline like gymnastics? My impression seems to be that gymnastics is more about uh, symmetry of movement. Tricking seems to create the illusion that the laws of physics are being bent by using things like uh, asymmetric movement and, and uh, just really non-conventional ways of moving the body. Remember how the touchdown raise lets Guthrie gather angular momentum? It also allows him to start twisting before initiating the cork, which means that when he does take off, he's already spinning. Compare that to a similar maneuver in gymnastics, the quad twist. Here's footage of the first one ever recorded in competition. Now, the setup for this trick is a series of symmetrical back handsprings, but here's the catch. Those handsprings, totally linear. Unlike with the touchdown raise, there is no rotation around the axis running through this gymnast's head and feet, so he doesn't start spinning until right as he leaves the ground. Only once he's airborne does he really start to twist. And then there's the landing. Gymnasts lose points if they don't stick their landing in a square, stable position on both feet. But trickers? Trickers can land any number of ways. In other words, there is a flexibility in tricking that allows athletes to explore more dynamic movements than you would find in a sport like gymnastics. And that flexibility could be what enables a tricker to graduate from a quad cork to a quint. And that tricker might just be this guy. My name is Alexander Anderson, and I'm the most consistent quad corker in the game. Remember, only three people on Earth have landed a quad cork on film. The first was Michael Guthrie, and he's only landed it once. The second is Japanese tricker Shosei Iwamoto. He's landed it a few times. And then there's Anderson. How many quad corks have you landed? I think I've landed like maybe a little over 10 or something. What sets you apart? Why can you land it so much more consistently? I go two twists on the way up. Okay. And then I use the two twists coming up. And then once I reach the top, I start twisting for two more coming down. It happens so quickly, it's hard to say whether Anderson is spinning faster, jumping higher, or both. But either way, he's pulled this off more times than anyone else on the planet. Do you have any goals in terms of trying to hit a quint? Yeah, of course. I do think it is a possibility, but I just don't think it's a possibility yet. When do you think a quint will happen? I think in between like five and like six, seven years maybe. To be honest, it might take even longer than that. It took Guthrie almost eight years to graduate from the triple cork to the quad. And every tricker we spoke to said that going from the quad to the quint would be significantly harder. But if someone is going to pull it off, it's clear what they'll need to work on. The first thing is more height, which is the kind of thing an even bouncier spring floor could help with. But even more important might be increasing their rate of spin. There are two ways that the tricker can hopefully achieve this. One, by providing more torque on the body during the moment when the feet are in contact with the ground. 
and by providing more of a dramatic, larger before, smaller afterwards, change in moment of inertia. In other words, trickers are gonna need to find a way to squeeze even more power out of their setup move. For something like the touchdown raise, that means starting with their limbs even farther out and retracting them even tighter around their axis of rotation. Another possibility is that no matter how they move their bodies, the touchdown raise just won't be powerful enough. Maybe, like with the quad, trickers training for the quint will have to develop an entirely new setup move. But until they do, remember that what trickers like Guthrie and Anderson are doing is already almost impossible.